Hey, what's going on guys? Just want to give you a little bit of an update. Be filming some training today, doing some bench and some deadlift, and I think that's about it, actually. This is the home gym. Um, the Texas Strength Systems drop-in bench here. Um, and I had them manufacture it so that it was exactly as wide as my power rack is, so I can kind of just uh, scoot it up against the power rack there. This is a Rogue Monster Light rack with... Uh, the sandwich cups here. Um, those are the uh, sandwich cups. The power bar from uh, Ohio. Let me see. There we go. Looks like autofocus is working pretty well. Um, just some General Troy place there. Uh, deadlift platform, uh, a jack, and a few other minor accessories. Uh, of course, my accessory wall there. And this is my office on this side of things. So normally what I do, oh, and I just got some, some lights installed, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about those. Uh, well, I installed them myself. Um, normally what I do is I will pull up my training on my computer here. I will pull up uh, some YouTube videos for some music, and uh, I'll get to work. So recently changed this side of things around a little bit, opened it up, added a uh, floor carpet there, and we have a treadmill, uh, sorry, elliptical over here. Some whiteboards up here, some books and such, and uh, there you have it. So this is the basement of our house in Denver, Colorado, uh, and just a beautiful place to train, brainstorm, uh, and get some solid work done. So I'm going to do a warm-up, some deadlifts, and I think today's session here, uh, if we zoom in, uh, we're looking, oh shit, <laughs> we're looking at this one. So we've got a 3 by 3 on bench press at 340 and a 3x3 three three on deadlift at 555 or so. There we have it. Getting some training and uh, talk to you guys soon. So, a little voiceover now, getting into my warm up here, which is usually pretty similar um, with some small changes, but for the most part, I start off with a barbell complex with uh, rows, RDLs, um, some uh, presses overhead. Um, some good mornings, some squats sometimes, and then some side bends. Um, and then if I'm doing sumo deadlifts, I will do some sumo deadlifts with the bar. So, you know, you'll see me kind of take it through this and, um, oh, some hand cleans too. This has been pretty constant for the past uh, two years or so. And, and the reason I kind of switched over to this was uh, when I started at places that did not have a concept thrower, um, I switched to using something that had a, uh, a barbell for increasing mm, heart rate and just kind of getting me physically warm um, instead. Back when I used to train at Powerhouse in uh, Chatsworth, uh, I would do I would do um, Concept Rower instead, and uh, it was pretty good. But uh, but now I've switched. So as you can, <laughs> as you can probably see, I have filled out the 231 pound weight class, and uh, I'm sitting right around 230. Uh, 227 uh, ish in that range and uh, I probably want to stay here for the better part of 2016 uh, just so that you know there's no problems with uh, you know coming in in the 105 pound weight class um, since it's been a while uh, since I've updated this YouTube account um, I set the total um, world record in the IPF uh, division for open 105 kilo and uh, I set it at 1897 pounds or 860.5 kilos and um, not too long after that, I hit a pretty um, substantial bench press uh, PR as well. I, I pressed uh, 495 in training. Um, I think it looked good. The pause was a little bit short, but uh, it's really exciting. Um, thanks to Eric Helms and Matt Gary's help uh, in competition in March, I was able to squat 667. I think I benched 468, and I think I deadlifted 761. So. Uh, I'll talk a little bit later about this goals board I have uh, as well, and uh, you know what's been going on with some other things. But uh, as far as warm up goes, um, you know even if you look back three four years of my videos, you should uh, see some of this stuff here: um, some side swings, some front swings, uh, and some floor patterns as well in a quadruped position, which I'll be getting to in just a sec. So um, the the warm up really hasn't changed, and. Not that you have to do this, um, but just find something that's effective, repeatable, and uh, doesn't take too much time uh, for you, unless you have time and it's okay for taking time. Um, 
as some of you know, uh, I am a coach and uh, founder of The Strength Athlete, and uh, things have been going well on that regard. Uh, we've got uh, athletes at all experience levels and uh, primarily powerlifting athletes, but a few athletes who are dual sport athletes. Um, back to the warm up, by the way, you'll notice uh, one feature is quite a lot of glute activation. So I find personally for me that uh, a ton of glute activation ends up uh, really uh, having a positive impact on my overall uh, training performance for the lower body and uh, killing my back and rear delts has a positive impact for uh, my upper body. So, you know, you kind of see that uh, manifest itself in the warm up here. But uh, yeah, as far as training goes, I'm just really lucky to be surrounded by uh, this group of individuals that uh, helps me succeed and that uh, allows me to continue what I'm doing. So, um, so yeah, I'm very thankful for that. We see some hollow rocks here. Sometimes I'll do these with my knees up and sometimes I'll do this with uh, straight legs as well. You can scale it uh, to your own difficulty. So getting into the barbell now, um, I have switched over to sumo deadlifting and, and that's been uh, a little while now. You'll see me lay down a, uh, a few towels there and spray with some water here. Um, because I pull on a wood floor, uh, because I use a shoe that doesn't have uh, any gripping on the bottom, I find that this allows me to plant my feet better, especially with uh, you know chalk getting everywhere. So um, I I've had no problems with slippage um, now that I've just taken this spray bottle and just sprayed a little bit. So as far as deadlift stance goes, um, my goal is really to have my shins vertical uh, at the very start of the pull. Um, so that's that's kind of been one of the guiding principles as far as setting uh, my stance width. And um, other than that, I try to keep the bar as close to the body. And in fact, one of my cues that you will see up on the uh, board there behind me when I talk about that is lean back into it. Uh, and I find it better when I feel the pressure on the whole of my foot, but I feel the bar against my body, if that makes any sense. Um, so uh, combined uh, those two cues uh, and elevating my head has ended up uh, really honing my technique to something that I feel very comfortable and feels very repeatable to me. Um, so, you know, if you were brand new to starting off sumo, I think uh, good cues would be uh, to start with your stance such that uh, at the start your shins are vertical uh, and to start with the bar against your shins and to make sure that as you start the pull, uh, your hips don't rise first. So a lot of people make the mistake of starting with their hips uh, too low and, uh, you know, trying to get that classic belly of like deep hip position um, and uh, it's, it's just not attainable. Uh, for most people and even if it is probably not the right move um, so we can expand on that in future uh, videos about biomechanics but uh, this is my work set I think which is 570 um, and you could call this day like a power uh, day so you know the weights aren't supposed to be very heavy it's generally a lower repetition lower volume overall uh, day uh, designed to just uh, give me another chance to touch the barbell and get some solid movement in um, Usually I belt up at some point during my uh, warm-ups and uh, you'll see me throw the straps on after this just so I can just focus on the pull and, and not about the grip. Um, so yeah, I've got uh, another two sets here uh, before I get into talking about uh, my board. So I'm going to cut off the uh, voiceover and catch you guys on the other side. Hey guys, so I just want to make a quick add-on. Uh, this is a whiteboard that I've got to keep track of uh, my goals and some cues down here at the bottom. Um, I recently did this a few days ago and uh, I found by the way after the Arnold that my motivation had dropped pretty low. I just didn't have that desire to go train. Uh, you know, I wasn't motivated uh, to get out and train. I missed a training session, you know, probably once each week. Um, I just generally wasn't feeling like into it. And that's okay, it happens from time to time. Uh, training and how motivated you are is variable. 
Um, but in getting back on track, I created this board to just remind myself why I'm doing this, what's motivating me right now, what are my goals. So I've got this journal that I picked up called the Self Journal. Let me grab it. It's pretty cool. It's a three month uh, long planner slash journal. Um, and what, what the two people here did was try to figure out um, which tactics from all these motivational speakers and stuff like that actually worked, which ones could you implement on a daily basis, and uh, they put it in here, so um, you've got like this zero time thing where you're supposed to track out every uh, minute of your day so there's no time wasted, uh, you've got a section for saying what you're grateful for both in the morning and the evening, uh, a section to keep track of longer term goals, a section to keep track of today's targets, so that you're really cognizant of what's going on. Um, and in the beginning, you're supposed to uh, fill out a goal that you want to accomplish um, by the end of this, which is supposed to be a quarter of a year. So, you know, uh, three months or something like that. And um, they have you sign it at the end and, and write it out, so it's, it's close to a contract. And that's something of what I try to do here. That I'm working for a 700 squat, a 500 pound bench, and an 800 pound deadlift as my long term goals right now. If I happen to hit those, I'll simply set higher goals. Um, that's really what I'm going. Achieve these because I'm capable, worthy, and strong. Just an affirmation that I'm good enough to achieve those things. Uh, I've got what it takes, and I don't have to become someone different to do that. This is who I am, and this is something that I can be capable of. Finally, signing it, dating it, making it real. And then just a few notes to myself down at the bottom. The fact that they're scary is good. It means they're real. It means I've made them challenging enough, um, but also somewhat achievable. So uh, I think it's a good thing if you've got dreams that are scary. Um, and whether you do something like this on a whiteboard or whether you just you know make yourself a note and stick it on your iPhone or you know stick it in your gym bag or something like that, I think it's a good idea to, to make a promise to yourself in some capacity, um, even if it's a mental one. We kind of all have these, uh, and it's nice to have it concrete here. So we'll finish up with a little bit of bench press here. Uh, this is my warm up for my upper body, which I'll do right before I do bench pressing. Uh, I don't like to do all my warm up together because I find that by the time I'm ready to do the actual movements I was warming up for uh, for the second movement, I am cold <laughs> on that, and so uh, I just you know save it. This is a, a rogue. Uh, voodoo floss band and I stretch it pretty far here um, I think I've got about 10 feet to stretch on this uh, at the point where my arms are farthest from my body and uh, you'll see me vary the distance to get the tension of where I want but this is what I was talking about before about just killing my rear delts um, you know I'm basically doing the same movement in you know three different ways here um, I, I've got the uh, Y pull aparts uh, the T pull aparts uh, the pull downs and then the single arm variations of those. And I turn around and I get um, a little bit of stretch and also some tricep um, movement here. And then I bring the band down a little bit and do a few uh, fly type movements. Um, of course, the resistance uh, itself doesn't really matter too much. And the number of repetitions doesn't really matter too much. It's, it's more of a, a feel thing. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how it goes and it tends to work pretty well. So cut straight to the working sets here. Um, I'll take you through my setup. So I kick my hips up and the, the wiggle side to side is to get my glutes kind of pinched in closer to the bench. Then I will scoot my feet down so that my feet are flat. My head will lift up and then I will drive both my head and my shoulders down into the bench as I unrack the barbell. So we'll go through that same thing again on, on the next set here so we can see uh, what's going on. I like to keep a small bend in my wrist uh, as well. It helps keep the weight kind of stable over my hand, but hips up to get the hips in position. Then I'll put the feet down on the ground, rock side to side, shift the feet forward until they're flat, head up. There we go. Drive it down and unrack. And as far as the unrack, uh, since I'm training here by myself, I try to keep that unrack as small as possible uh, to keep things as efficient uh, as possible. So <laughs> this will conclude the first uh, training video log on YouTube that I've done in a long time. Um, thanks guys for anyone that's still watching this and uh, definitely be trying to do more of these. Hope everyone's doing well. Talk to you soon.